about your children. I am working it out. You're worried about your marriage. I am working it out. But 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 what does that mean? That he's good and he loves us. What does that mean? No, because people hear, oh, God will work it out. And they're like, yes. It'll be the way he wants to do it. It'll be the way he wants. What does that mean? Maybe not the way he wants. Well, what do you need, honey? Can you I do it for you? Yeah, we need to trust. Yeah. 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 We need to receive. We need to receive. We need to allow it to be his way. I think he's doing it. He's doing it. We don't. We don't see it. Yes. I um. We got some people on Zoom. It's funny. I I um. Uh, I got this thing this week. I think Gilbert sent it. Uh, but Gilbert's not on. I, I never heard this. You know, I always, I always heard this verse, and I didn't know what it meant. I thought I knew what it meant. But why am I so loud? Um, we don't even need this. Making me crazy. I can hear myself talk. Being still does not mean don't move. I used to wonder, be still? I said, I can be still. I love being still. I think it means move in peace. So when you all hear that song, yeah, that was a wow. I, I, I never respond to the men's chat. I responded to that. Finally, someone explained to me what it means to be still. It's not do nothing. It's move in peace. That song is like, oh, yeah, he'll work it out. What does that mean? You know, I just want to. Nothing worked out the way I ever thought it worked out. Nothing. But everything has worked out better than I thought it would work out. And I didn't get to where I am the way I wanted to get to where I was. I am where I am because he forced me. Because it wasn't, yeah, hallelujah, do God's will. No, 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 no. He forced me. Because he's good. So we don't believe that. Okay, sorry. That was it. I'm listening to that song in this but he does work things out, and we gotta believe that he will. The thing is that how can we trust someone we don't know? How can we trust someone we're angry with? How can we trust someone we're blaming? So I mean, it all and, and it all has to do with our heart, where we are, where we're at, and this is why we're unraveling it little by little, pieces by pieces here. So um, I want to read something to you guys. <clears throat> and this is an invitation I'm doing. This is from Max Lucado. Who likes Max Lucado? I think he, back in the days, he had a lot of good things to say, and I think he still does. So, on one, on one bit, that's too loud. On one particular day, Jesus was drawn to the pool of Bethsaida. His eyes landed upon a man who had been sick for 38 years. Jesus asked him, would you like to get well? I cannot, sir, the sick man said, for I have no one to put me into the pool when the water bubbles. Someone else always gets in ahead of me, John 5.5. 5. What an odd question to ask a sick person. Would you like to get well? To us, Jesus asks, Jesus is asking you all today, would you like to get well? Yes. Or do you like being sick? Getting well means getting up. Getting a job, getting to work on time. Do you really want to be healed? That's the question Jesus asked them. That's the question Jesus asks all of us still. Today. 
So my question to you guys today is, do you want to get well? I, I read an email this morning or last night, I forget when, I get so many emails in the day because I subscribe to everything mankind puts out there on healing, you know? And it's like, I forget, I sent it to you, I think. It was like, we don't want to do the hard work. I mean, I had that conversation with the men this Thursday. It's like, nobody wants to do the heavy lifting. They just want to flip a switch and we should get well. Funny that. Well, this is why we're here. This is why in this process, we hear all these big statements. Do you want to get well? And I remember sitting in places saying, yes, I want to get well. I want to see my family heal. But then my next thing was how? How do I do it? And I went about doing it the best way I could. Right. And how I was hearing in the church, OK, they cannot listen to circular music because then they're going to go to hell. Oh, OK, so I would come home and ban all the circular music. So I was doing it the best way I could, but it, didn't, it wasn't working. And I think to be able to respond to that in a fair way. Do you want to get well? Yes. But then we have to begin to remove what is there. You know, remove all the, everything that has been upon put upon us, you know, the traumas, the the good things, the bad things, the good stories, the bad stories. You know, um when my son that's 34 34 now <clears throat> was like about 7 6 years old. I, we were living in Hong Kong at that time, and it was Christmas time. And there was a Latin Women's Association group of ladies. So we had parties and things through the year. And before, everyone was expat. So everyone was going back to wherever they are for Christmas holidays. And um, they did a Christmas party for all the children. And um, they had a piñata. Somebody had made a piñata, and they brought it to this party in Hong Kong. <laughs> So here we are, and they're about to break the piñata, and my son had to be the first one. My son had to be the one to get more candies, and I am so glad I was around there because I was watching them break the piñata, and I was trying to say, wait, wait, it's not your turn, Louis, wait, you know? All of a sudden, they break the piñata, and my son dies. He's the first one. And when he dives in, to grab all these candies, I see like 40 kids jump on top of him. Literally like like little wild animals. I was like, and then it dawned on me because I can only see his feet and he's kicking them. And I see that and I begin to try to try to remove kids that one candies in a piñata and nobody, none of the adults was watching. I was screaming. These kids were screaming and I could hear my son screaming underneath and I could only see his feet. I began to move all these kids and move them and I would grab them and they would go back again until one lady and another lady saw me and they began to move until finally the only thing I found his head. I was holding his head like this because we could not remove all the kids. I'm telling you, if I don't think, if we would have not been watching, I think that, that would have been a disaster. So I go back to that story to tell you, there's so much that's choking, asphyxiating our true selves. Mm -hmm. So many lies, who we are meant to be. And it's not easy. <clears throat> and I remember pulling some kids and then them looking at me like, hey, lady, what are you doing? And then them going back, you know, and this is the things we remove some of those lies. They look at us like, what are you doing? I've been here for this is me. And then they go back, you know, and then we got to be fighting. And if the only thing we can do is at least begin to get our heads out. This is what we're doing, but it's a process. It would not happen with a switch. Impossible. Impossible. Maybe. We I see what? Share, I want to share something that is sad. Does she need the mic? I got to get up there if you want to. Oh, okay. No, no, I'm just, thank so, you, Louis. It's almost like getting under the rubble. And I'm just going to tell you three lines that are 
these are little issues, they're not big issues, that I had confronted in me in the last probably month. The first one was the lipstick. I wouldn't wear lipstick here. Because there's something in me, the lie is, Vivian, you always look like shit. This is the persona that you have projected. If you wear the lipstick, they're gonna say you're fake. You are a con, you're this, you're that. The first time I wore it, everybody's commenting and I'm like freaking out. The second time, less people commented, now nobody comments. So guess what? I wear it. So I got that out of the rubble. The second one um, is the, um, I have a tendency, which is another line. I only wear one pair of shoes, mm. like let's say for work. And I bought a pair of shoes about three months ago and it was a drama to buy them. I buy them and then I don't wear them because I buy stuff and it's like I'm wearing for the special moment. <clears throat> yeah, perfect case. You end up having it. I didn't get to wear it, only maybe one time. So the shoes, yesterday I have to go to a job and it was a good idea to wear those shoes instead of the ones that I wear all the time. And it took all the courage that I got to just go ahead and wear those shoes. Then I'm at like I'm at work in the building and I'm calling Miguel, hey, if they don't before I left the house, I'm like, wear them. If I don't like them, you can have them, they fit you. Are you sure? Because if not, I have to return them. Like a whole drama over a stupid pair of shoes that probably cost 20 bucks. And I'm at the place and I'm like, I think they're bothering me here or there. It's all mental. At the end of the day, I wore them the whole day. There's nothing wrong with the shoes, it's me. So at the end of the day, I'm gonna wear the shoes. In the third line, that's, this is a big one. I come here, I do like to dance. I see people dancing here in the break or something, and I'm like, I'm not gonna dance because whatever, because it's part of like the persona, the depressive, the like the same crap about the lipstick, right? Like, how the hell can I dance? They're gonna say, you're a fucking con. You came here, you're like the poster child of the worst. And at the end of the day, you're dancing. What the hell, was that a show? And every week I would be like, am I gonna do it? No, I won't do it. So one day I just said, screw it. So I did that, I didn't say the F word. Um, I danced the first time, it was super hard. Cause I'm like, they're watching me or this, it's like nobody's watching me. Everybody's in their own drama and their own lives. And now I've done it three weeks, that's it. I overcame it. Who cares? So, so that's the thing. You know what's under the rubble. That's nothing. That's like that's like the cherry on top in my life. But but that's a start. Yeah. That's that's me. No, but the the the, 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 pro, the problem is so we start with oh no these are three little things and guess what we're not little things and we do this to ourselves all the time. We minimize stuff. The little things, you know what? For you, those are things. We're always looking at everybody else. So oh. that's that's amazing, Bibi. That's amazing because you see, you're identifying. These are things you're getting out of the rubble. And guess what? Before you know it, this when you begin to move, even this that seem to you like little pieces, it gives space for other things to get loose, and then you'll be able to bring something else. So, I mean, that's it. So why do we have to get out of the rubble? I mean, and that only you guys know. It's your rubble. You know, only you guys know. So we have been talking about emotional maturity and all those, all these links with it, all these links with it to be able to become emotionally mature. This is why we're all wearing today, for those that are here, a little path fire, because we're all babies and we're all, a lot of us are still stuck in that baby stage and infant stage and we're in, trapped in adult bodies. So um, we have been speaking about one of the big foundations for to begin this class is joy. To be able to have that center, that place of joy, not happiness, joy that when we get out of center, we can, we know how to come back. 
that joy center should have been given to us from the very beginning of time, meaning from when we were in our mother's womb, that we are so familiar with it, that the minute we get upset or the minute somebody knocks, gets us out, we can recognize it immediately and say, I'm not in my joy center, what happened? But the thing is that we are so clueless about that joy center. We did not experience that joy center that we have no clue. Actually, our MO and our place where we feel comfortable, a lot of us, is in chaos, because that's all we know. So when we wear lipstick, when we, let me enjoy, I mean, you're overthinking it because that has not been normal to you, but that's normal. That's what normal is. And then all of a, all of a sudden, you begin to conquer with that. So that's super important. So we spoke about that all the stages, we have the infant stage that we need to receive without having to give or ask for. The infant stage, which is the one we're talking about now, and I'm determined to finish it today because I'm going to. <laughs> and we have the child stage uh, to learn to take care of oneself, the adult stage to care for two or more people at the same time, then the parent stage um parents give life to children without requiring anything in return the elder care for your community and guide those without families of their own <clears throat> so um so this is what we're being so this is what we've been talking about so the infant stage so the infant needs to receive without having to give so what is that? Receive what? Receive unconditional love and care. So unconditional love and care. It's expressed in many different ways. How can we express unconditional love and care? Tell me. How can a parent, how can a parent express unconditional love and care? Are you awake? Mario gave coffee today. Coffee, Red Bull, uh, love. Coke. If they know it. You feel it. Yeah. You feel it. Okay. What else? They synchronize with the baby. To to be able to synchronize with the baby. Acceptance. Accepting the baby. And sometimes that happens even from the mother's womb to be able to accept. Do you know, like a lot of the times we don't even know what's going on inside of us because a lot of this trauma happened when we didn't even have the words or the maturity in any way, shape, or form to be able to say, ouch, this hurts, most, ouch, mo, this mo, doesn't feel no, good. No, no, most of our trauma <clears throat> happens there. Can you, That's why when, they, when we're adults and we're trying to express something, you all don't have this problem. You find it so hard to express yourself and it just comes out in the very, very caveman type way, anger, Anger, insults. rage, insults. Insults is not caveman. You already got one. Insults, shut down. <laughs> shut down. So basic. I mean, don't you guys wonder about this? I mean, Giovanna, we think about this all day long. This, these are the conversations we have at home every day. Not about you guys, about me. Yes. My name is loud. Oh, really loud. Hello. <laughs> um, yeah, I think about that because um, just even hearing like stories from what my mom, how she would express like how she would just feeding in general. So my mom, when I was born, my sister was already two years old. So she had a two year old and a newborn. And what she would say is that when I would be hungry, my sister would be hungry at the same time. So what she would do is she would hold me basically like hold the bottle with her chin at the same time giving a sister food so i wonder in those moments like i didn't have a lot of contact it was just kind of like oh the baby needs to be fed let me give her the bottle how i can and it wasn't like this time of like let me bond with her it was like i'm just trying to survive because i have two crying children and i'm trying to give one food here and then the other one here so it was almost like i feel like i missed out Absolutely. That, yeah. Absolutely. So if she's trying to survive with these two babies, because yeah. a two-year-old is still a baby. Yeah. If yeah. you're trying to survive with this.
learn how to be in survival mode. Mm -hmm. I'm surviving too, like my mother is surviving. Because yeah. she doesn't have it to give it. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean she's doing it intentionally, but it's just not there. So, <clears throat> yeah. So that's that. So, you know, so we get, we know we're unconditional love through words of affirmation. We know we're unconditional love through kisses, through healthy touch. It's so important, you know? Eye contact, synchronization, it's, it's so important too, you know? So, um, for, yes. My yes, of course. I, think I just need to get this off my chest. You mean how you act today or when you were a little baby? <laughs> when I was a little baby. Oh, okay. and, and I don't know, I, I, I don't know anything about my infancy, so I asked my parents. And I asked them out of curiosity, but I can tell by the way they responded that it was offensive to them that I would ask and that I, they felt the judgment, I guess. Because they felt insecure as of why I would even ask. Because they felt like they did their best. But maybe I was looking for something. So I asked them how was Ray, like how did my mom take care of me? And she was like, what do you mean? He took care of you like any other baby would be taken care of. And I'm like, okay, what does that mean to you then? What did you do? And she's like, we changed your diaper, we fed you, we were there for you when you woke up, we held you, we loved you so much. But like, I wanted, I don't know, I guess I, my expectation of that question was to feel like, what did you do? Like, did you hold me near your chest? Did you tell me you loves me? Did you like, I don't know, did you do cradle me? I wanted to know stories, but they couldn't tell me that. And so I felt like I didn't get, con like I got conditional love because it was like, we did everything a responsible parent could do. But we did everything that, just to keep you alive, I guess, you know? So it's, it's still conditions just to keep you alive, and just to get you to, you know, doing what we as parents need to do. But I don't, I just needed to share that because it felt like the response I got from my parents was like, you guys didn't really, you know, I don't know, it just didn't feel like they loved me more than. And and, I'm, I, and I think, I think they did. I think they loved you to the best, and as they still do, to the best of their capacity and ability and what they know culturally yes. it's important. Yes. Um, I mean, we do the best, yes. you know? Now we're beginning to realize, wow, you know, kids need to be whole. Wow, kids need to be That's seen. Yeah. Uh, kids <laughs> need to, to be way. talked to. Oh, kids are listening when we are when they're in our wounds they're they're listening whether we're saying wow i didn't want it, this child you know um i was just beginning my masters and what an inconvenience what a time to get pregnant oh we're immigrating we're planning to immigrate this country we're planning to go to another country and i just found out i'm pregnant wrong timing now we know because of science that begins to say that the baby's receiving that. So there's so many things we didn't know. Yeah, and it makes sense now, the way that they treat me now as an adult. It makes sense. Like, there's no emotional connection. There's just like, we got a house over your head, we made, you know, we got you here to where you're on your own now. I'll go, you know, or do your thing. So I can get but it. But you see, that's what they were trained to. That's what they, this, and for them, that's the best. But now we know, and it's, we were with Brandon yesterday. And I was going to ask you later to send it to me. Will you I read from a text to remind one sec? You you read from your phone something, and you said that, which is we say it all the time. But the way Jack Frost says it here, um, do you have it there? And you said that he says that whatever happens to us, but now is our. Can you read it? No, can you? Oh, okay. I mean, this is okay. I also want to say okay, I have a so, lot to say. Okay, so I'm let him. I'm myself Amen. all morning. It's not worth it. <laughs> I want to explode. You're safe. Okay, so oh. you're safe. It's on, Brandon. You can come up here and read it if you want. Oh, I know it. Okay, oh, say, you know it. say. Okay, it's where we are innocent of the wounds that were given to us, but we are accountable. For what we do with oh. those wounds. Wow. Okay, one you second. Say it again. <laughs> say it again. <laughs> and, and, and say it like you mean say it. Say it again loud and clear. And slowly. Slowly. 
So we are innocent of the wounds that were given to us, but we are accountable for the actions that we do with those wounds. You see? Mm -hmm. So, and I think our parents were just doing their best. So explode, Lucky. No, I just think that, no, I, I want to say, you want to say something else? Desma wants want to, to say, say something. That my mom told me when I was, because my mom is from the islands, and she told me, when it's time for you to eat, I will feed you, and I will change your diaper, and I will put you back down. It didn't matter if I was crying, it didn't matter what was going on. She did what she needed to do so that I was healthy and taken care of. And even now, because I notice as an adult, I always need something in my mouth. And I always wow. need like ice or gum or wow. food or something. And I'm trying to console myself because that's what I had to do as a baby. You're and trying to pacify yourself. Yeah. Wow. Exactly. Well, and then I good, see Desmond. earlier, you were that's not that's here, that's when I said, we got to hear at all these things. You see, we, we, we know, we, we discover, oh my God, I need to have something always in my mouth. Ooh. Why? Oh, that's just me. That's just the way I am, I guess. So I'll, I see a lot of people chewing gum, so that. No, there's a reason, there's reasons for it. Everything. And I think when we become aware and we begin to say, why is it that I have this need? And the answer might not come right away. You put it out there, and this is where you, this is where science with psychology and the Holy Spirit does an amazing job. Because this is where we need his input to say, and we talked about this yesterday. <clears throat> I don't understand why, but you know what? I'm gonna put it here. You know, the problem, we were talking to somebody this week and we separate everything, secular. What is that? It was also invited, invented by God. And who created Satan? Himself? I mean, you know, what do we think? It's so dualistic. We're in so much trouble because of the way we think. I mean, Twan, your parents did their best. And, and you, it's funny, you told the story and you were answering your own question. Yeah. I don't know if you realize that. I'm the first child. So you you went to your mother and said, what did you do? What do you mean? What normal people do. What's that mean? But she's really telling you the truth. She thinks this is what, and she did the best she could. Okay, go on. And you said a word, you said you they felt it. shame. They felt insecure, you said insecure. That's the word you use. Yeah, as parents, then you feel insecure, your guards go up and then. No, because they can sense our relationship isn't well right now. So yeah. Me asking that question, it's like me blaming you, but I wasn't trying to. No, no, I no. understand, no. but it, it's hard as a parent when you get it. So, but then here, this is the one that's sitting in this room, the one that's going through this right. journey is who? One, uh, your mom and dad are not here. They will be here. That this will be beautiful. But then this is where you begin. This is where we need to have grace, and this is where forgiveness comes. Because they might never wake up and realize. They they might die thinking we did the best. What an ungrateful little child, you know. And that's that's okay for them. But then this is when you begin to rise and his kindness towards them. His goodness through you towards them. Through you. His forgiveness for you to love. them will begin to heal your relationship with them. Jack always used to say, get, get it and give it away. I mean, y'all really should watch Jack Frost. I'm sorry. But I'm not, I'm not, can I say a few more things? Mm -hmm. I'll try to keep it short. Okay. Uh, I lost my time. I get so nervous. Okay. All right, carry on. No, okay. Silent. I was. I just got back from Colombia. I was visiting my dad, and he's. I, I don't know. He might be in his last days, and being there, I went through the whole stage of my life, and Joanna said something to me. This morning, she said, how is your dad? I said, well, he's, he's there, he's stable. And he says, how's your family? And I realized what you just said. Brendan? Brendan just said that it's not my fault what I received. 
but it's up to me what I do with it. Mm -hmm. And I realize I've been like in a shell, judging and criticizing myself, trying to forgive my dad for what he gave me was his best, what he had. And then I'm here like digging a hole for myself. And I realize now I have to, I have to trust God. He's doing it and he's doing it for my dad. He's doing it for myself and he's doing it for my wife, my kids. So it's, it's like I'm listening to myself, seeing myself, looking at myself, what is it that I'm doing? And I can't continue this way. I have to, I have to get out. I have to bring my head out. Thank you. Exactly. That's it. <laughs> That's it. So, so, um, so I, I, I really think, Tuan, I'm speaking to you, I don't know why. I really think they did their best and they're doing their best. I really believe it. I, I, I you know, what they're saying, yeah, yeah, and the thing is like what Brandon read this morning is what we were talking about earlier. That's part of the heavy lifting that we're not. And one of the biggest failures Giovanna and me sees in everyone, including ourselves, is we're not ready to do the heavy lifting. We're not ready to do the work, and we're not ready to go all the way, and we get stuck. And, and you know, it's like, it's funny, even John 5 that we read about, you know, what, did, what was Jesus saying to the sick man by the pool? What's that? The heavy lifting. Get up. Get up, he said to him. Get in the, pick up your mat and move. Pick up your pain. The heavy lifting. Thank you, God. Pick up your pain. And so many of us are stuck, and we want to know why we're stuck. And you know, this thing about the father, like she said about the, 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 the pacifying thing, it's very interesting because we talked about that yesterday, or we talked about it. You know, like she, okay, now she realizes she has an oral fixation. Okay, where did it come from? And you know what we do? We, where did it come from? And we stay there. Oh, it came from here. Oh, good. Now what are you going to do with it? Because that's not all the, that's not the whole healing. The healing is then what do you, Jack said, then what do you do with that? Heavy lifting again. And we don't want to do the work. We don't want to do the work. We want a scripture verse. We want a ding, ding, ding. And it ain't coming. Yes, I've seen miracles and we all have seen miracles. But it ain't coming. And then we blame God. And it's all God's fault. Manas fall, it's all Lewis's fall, it's all y'all fall. Well, like we said last time, we create storms and then we get upset when it rains, you know? Like, I love that, you know? <clears throat> I love that. You That's know, where we, a lot of us get stuck, you know? You know, and ultimately, my story, and I don't know about Giovanna's, and I don't know about all of you, I know about Jack's. It's funny, we can do this father and mother work, but if we ultimately don't really He had a father, he had a mother, he grew up in, what healed him? What he, you all know that the revelation of the love of the father healed, no, no, he was healed. No, he wasn't. Scripture says he grew in stature and wisdom. The revelation of the love of his father for him healed him. It's in the Bible. It's in the book, The Return of the Prodigal Son. What are we doing? We can talk about all this father and mother stuff forever, but if we don't get a revelation of the father's love for us individually, it won't work. That's what he'll jack. That's what he'll, I mean, my father and mother did nothing. He died. And I could have stayed there. Oh, you know, it's funny, just last week I was sharing with Joanna. I realized again, I think, my parents were never around. They were never around. I'm, I'm sitting there last week and I get this glaze, I get this, and I'm like shocked. I said to Joel, do you know my parents were never around? No. But what's healing me? The revelation of the love of the Father. 
that he is Jesus too. Oh no, he's God. No, okay, whatever. I mean, we won't get into all the theology. Right? Okay, that was it. I'll stop. I had to. <clears throat> so, um, there's a PowerPoint for this. Some infants are high need babies, and need parents, and need parents who respond to their signs of desperation by delivering as much life as is needed. Listen to this. Where's Desma? Desma walked out? Yeah, she's okay. where, where is she? Oh. Listen to this. Some infants are high need babies and need parents who respond to their signs of desperation by delivering as much life as is needed. Many of us needed that and our parents, either for lack of time, for lack of knowledge, for ignorance, you name it, they were not able to deliver as much life as we needed it. While ignoring babies' cries is an attempt to control the crying, may get them to stop crying, this approach does not provide the safety or comfort that are vital to their future adult development. Oh, that's what's back. This is why we're here where we are today. Come this on. is why our relationships are struggling. I mean, I mean, this is well, and when we begin when we begin to peel this, this is where you begin even to give grace to yourself. Now I understand. Now I understand. There was some, one of the ladies in the chat wrote, and the ladies here will know, she wrote, I don't know why I am so afraid of doing new things. I'm so afraid of doing things. I mean, where does it come from? I mean, I realized, I mean, you guys would have been so proud of me in front of a judge this week, fighting for this place. I mean, would have never, <laughs> would have never, ever, not not one hour would have never even would have thought me in front of a judge first i would have pooped peed, thrown up or cried and never ever 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 i mean i did something that the judge was so proud that every time we met he kept saying but no 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 but joanna put yeah, the second down. time we asked <laughs> met the judge and the judge said joanna i you put your foot you down. Put your foot down. And you lack me. I don't think you would have. And I said, you're absolutely right. And you put your foot down. You know, no, he did. The judge I had that. no clue that I could do that. I've been learning in my late 40s, early 50s. I've been learning. I can do it. Before, because nobody ever told me. So, but then whenever I began to see this, it's up to me. Wow, what lies have I believed? What's under that rubble? And when I began to pull things, and it's not easy, it's hard. And don't think it's like, I was like, yeah, like, no, I was like, I did that? Oh my God, that was me. Like, I can't believe that, you know? Like, how did I do it? Ask me to do it again? I can't, you know? But I'm learning. I'm learning, Ashley. You, you wanted to say something to Desma? She's back. It was... What we read, it's read. She wanted you to read this. Oh, you read it? Oh. Ashley. Um, this morning when I was in the shower, my place of revelation, um, I was thinking about some things and I was feeling fear. And I asked myself, like, why are you so afraid of this? And it just came to me that I have this, and I'm, I'm thankful for that class with Gigi and Shumi because the wound driven beliefs, mm -hmm. like, I have millions, <laughs> probably, but one of them that I realized this morning is I believe that love is going to be withheld from me until I get to this place of perfection, I guess. Like, and it, it ties in with also last week with what I mentioned about feeling like there's certain parts of me that God looks away from or that are too ugly for him or too hard or so it's like this belief that like, I see something in me that I don't like, and I want to run from it so badly because I think it's going to prevent me from being loved. 
And so I was just in the shower and I was like, it is not true. Love is not withheld from you at any moment. And I was just going on and on. Love is not withheld from you when you have a judgment. Love is not withheld from you when you blah, 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 like going on and on and on. But it felt like I was taking off those kids. <laughs> yeah. Like it was tons of things all around just he's withholding from me. And I can see that's what Adam and Eve believed in the garden. And I can see how this has always been a thing. What is he withholding? He's withholding love. He's withholding power. He's withholding wisdom. He's withholding, like, I just believe that he's, like, abusive. You know, like, like he's, like, playing a game with me. Like, I have to play hide and seek with God. Like, why are you making this so hard for me, right? Like, you don't want me to be happy. You don't want love for me. So it was, like, just unpacking all these things where I'm, like, it makes so much sense when the smallest things happen. I'm so afraid because I'm, like, I'm not going to be loved but it's not true. Um, but like you said, that felt like heavy lifting. I mean, I, had, I hadn't even come here yet and I already but, felt but, drained. But that is the heavy Because lift. I was like, this is so tired. That's tiring. part of it. <laughs> you see, that's how you, you know, he's, you're doing the work outside. The work doesn't stay here for three hours. No. Impossible, impossible. I, we were telling uh, someone yesterday, I mean, one thing I tell you, I mean, it's been hard. Lucky and I are standing by the grace of God and saving our marriage, saving our home. It has been one of the hardest things I think we've done. But I think one thing I do, and Lucky falls again, and sometimes he does things and I'm like, again, like I can't believe he's doing this again. But you know what? One thing I'm going to tell you and I'm going to give him credit for, it's like if Lucky heard that water was being dropped over there. It didn't matter where, anything related to healing, anything related, even if it was a fake, even if it was a scam, Lucky will go and Lucky will try it and Lucky will see it and Lucky will buy it. And then maybe it wouldn't work as much as we thought, but then over there, then Lucky will go. I mean, everywhere that anything that had to do with this, if you read a book and or heard a teaching and the guy talked about 10 different guys in that teaching, Lucky, like he said, will host 10 teachings the next day in the house. And he was listening to them. Guys, that's heavy lifting yes. until you get to the point. So um, to be able so that, that so the crying may get them to stop crying. So the baby might stop crying. But this approach does not provide the safety and comfort that are vital to the future of the adult development. This is so important because it begins to answer the questions of where we are today. You know, when Desma, when they put you to feet like that, Amarilis, when they just feed you and do that, guess who you're bonding with at that moment? Yeah. You're bonding with food. And then we wonder when we're a certain age, why do I need to have something in my mouth all the time? Why whenever there's something, why when I feel discomfort and when I feel fear, I find myself overeating? You're bonding, why when you're bonding not only with food, you're bonding with an oral fixation. Emotional hunger. Or a computer. Well, that comes later, that right? That comes later. Well, but now, those now are, it's coming earlier and earlier and earlier because I see babies of, walking around with phones. So those are one of the things. So many of you have heard this story. When we moved into my this mother's is a house, true story. <clears throat> my mom has a little bird. And um, he's very old now. His name is Polly. And we were developing all these classes and doing all this and we were in my mom's uh, dining room and he's by the dining room right there like in his cage so you know we will be developing all these classes this was at the very beginning and all of a sudden i would hear a little bell ringing like ling, 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 in his cage it's a parrot right Okay. And then knows anything about I have bought this parrot from my grand aunt who she had a parrot 
and it died because the pest control guy came and he killed him. So she was so sad. And I went with my son and I bought her one. I gave it to her. She was so happy. We named him and four days later, she ended up in the hospital because she had a heart failure or something. She never came out. So um, there was this bird that I had just bought for her and my mom inherited. My mom's not an animal person. She won't talk to animals or anything. She had him there. So we're trying to- She had to the bird doing the getting what? Just the basic No, one second, things. Twan. Oh, she gave you the answer. Lewis said something. Also. <laughs> that, he, that, got, he got food, roof, and clothing. And doctors. Like, like, and doctors. <laughs> you know, like when you go to the federal penitentiary, they put you in jail. You know, you get food, clothes. <laughs> so, and then, you know, so we would be concentrated in developing these classes. And all of a sudden, I would hear from the back here that, and I would be like, what, what is he doing? You know, like, then I would look at him and he would be, he had this little toy and he had a little, and he would be doing his thing with the little toy. And he was he would, humping the toy. And he would grab the wing, <laughs> and, but he would put the wing, yeah, 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 he yeah. would put the wing around it and everything. And it was this toy and it was all the toy and i mean he loved this toy and then all of a sudden it stopped a few hours later ling, 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 ling. and then my mom's like and i'm like mom why does he do that my mom says i they, have they removed the toy watch, i have right? no idea why he does that my mom says but I think he's making love to the toy. So we were, I would be like, Lucky, privacy, don't look, don't look, you know? <laughs> but I began to realize he was lonely. And you know, I said, and nobody can get near him. He had him an because, orphan heart because a woman died. Because, because nobody could get near him because nobody pet him ever or nothing. So he's very vicious. You get near, you get him near it and he starts to attack. So I made it a point. Every morning I would be like, hi, Polly. Good morning. I see you, Polly. No, you're friendly, Polly. And this is, I mean, a year and a half later, I would then open the little door of the cage and then we were doing the homework he would the, the classes he would come out to the edge of the door now and he would be there like just watching watching and i would say i see you poorly and i began to interact with him i got to touch him i would just take him out to sit with him to take some sun so you know that for the next one and a half year that we lived in my mom's house you would hardly hear the bell ring wow. when i began to connect with Polly. I mean, it was amazing. At one point, I'm like, you guys, he would bring the toy close to him. He would put the wing around the toy, but he would not be humping or doing anything. I mean, it was incredible. We watched this and I'm like, we left my mom's house. Because thank God we could afford now to pay our own rent and move to our own place. And few years a year later i came back to my mom's house i mean i'm going but one day i'm there and i begin to hear the bell ring. Um, so now that little bell's ringing because you see nobody's interacting with me so this is us too so what what's your bell so in, in the internet you'll find the stories of the wild elephants with the same thing yeah. and if you google even harder you'll find the stories of orphanages of babies who don't receive touch therapy and just get food, whatever, whatever, whatever. And they all died, but the babies that got touch therapy, the orphans that got in the, in the wars and all, they didn't die. They got one extra ingredient. This is all on Google. Yeah. So at this time of our lives, it's vital and critical for moms and dads to synchronize. Patty said that one of the ways we show unconditional love is synchronization. What did I do with Polly? I synchronized with him. I synchronized with him. I, I would, finally, I was able to, to get him 
That was it. That was the only one that was able to put my hand in it because I synchronized with him. So it's very important that we synchronize with the baby. <clears throat> so um, thriving is the vital, is the visible sign of a well-synchronized life. Listen to that. Thriving, when our lives are thriving, is because we had a well-synchronized life. That means someone looked at us. Someone said, you can do that. Someone encouraged you. How well we thrive flows from the ways we synchronize our personal and relational rhythms. You know, this is why I tell you, listen to your body. What is your rhythm? Find your rhythm. My daughter wants to go at the rhythm of other girls sometimes. And I say, Abigail, no, that's not your rhythm. They, it, it may be amazing that they can do that, but that's not your music. What's your tune? What's your music? Someone that helps you recognize this is your tune. This is your melody. This is your music. Don't play somebody else's tune. So, so whatever you didn't get <clears throat> as a child, there's hope. You can get it from the Father, or you can get it from each other. That's all the work of epigenetics, blah, blah, blah. So the baby's born. After the baby's born, the mother learns to secrete oxytocin and milk when her baby nurses. Listen to this. In the brain, oxytocin acts as a chemical messenger and has an important role in many human behaviors, including sexual arousal, recognition, trust. Where did King David said he learned to trust? He learned to rest, where? In my mother's womb, why? Because oxytocin was being released. King David knew that how many years ago, and today science is proving that. So what, uh, which of the three places, sexual arousal, recognition, how many people have pro problems with people that say, nobody sees me, nobody hears me. You, you hear the word recognition and you think, oh no, but you don't, you're not expanding your thinking. And what was the thing? Trust. Trust. How many people don't trust people and don't think people trust them? Romantic attachments. Rom romantic attachments. How many people can't have solid relationships? And mother and so mother sure and more. infant bonding. I mean, these are all important things. As a result, the love hormone or cuddle chemical. You know, so oxytocin help us bond with each other. And you see, so when we don't get this, so when you're being just fed, because you have to, it's part of having a child to keep him well, but that is, that's the only thing that's happening. Look at all of the things that we're skipping. Skipping, it's like going to first grade. Today, I feel, I, uh, today, with this whole COVID thing, kids in school are going with high anxiety, so difficult to learn. You, it's difficult to learn when you're in high anxiety. Um, teachers, teachers are themselves freaking out. So this is the environment right now. This generation, we will see it. Mark my words. This generation, we will see some results later. You'll see it. It's a fact. And then, not only that, so they're there in school, high anxiety, teachers are on high anxiety, so wearing a mask, wearing a mask, they cannot remove it. Uh, if they bring it, you know what kids' minds are going through, if you bring this thing home, an abuela, grandmother is home, and if she dies, so it might be your fault. I mean, look at this pressure. Yeah. Wash your hands properly, because if you remember, abuela está en la casa, abuela is home, and if you get abuela sick, it's going to be your fault. Yeah. 
I'm, li I'm, I'm hearing parents say that. Not only that, then how can you learn? So a solid first grade is not happening the way we knew it. A solid second grade is not happening. And then they're going to the next grade and they're going to the next grade. So there's something missing. We will see it later. You, we will see the fruits and the repercussions of this whole COVID thing. We will see it in this generation. Mark my words. So emotionally, when certain things didn't happen, we skip. Yeah, we kept moving into second grade, but there were some things that we skipped. This is why we are where we are today. Not because we're bad, not because we're evil, not because God cannot look at us when you're doing that, when you're inclining to same sex, when you are watching pornography, when you're uh, going from relationship to relationship, when you cannot hold a job. I mean, he's not, no, no, he's looking at us and he's trying to synchronize with us and saying, look at me, I will tell you who you are. Look at me, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. You see? So, um, Feeding synchronize their two bodies many times a day. You see, what a pain. I just fed the baby an hour later, like he wants to feed again. You, this is moms that are nursing, yeah? You hear that. There's a reason. God created all this for a reason. The rhythms of life, it's amazing. I've said it here before. Do you know it's scientifically proven when you have a group of women living together, roommates, sisters living together, all of a sudden, all of the menstrual periods begin to happen around the same time. It's so funny how that happens. Why? Why? Because we were supposed to live in communities and back in the days, then if I died at birth, there was somebody else that could feed that baby. You see, because she would be producing milk. It's, it's, I find that incredible, you know? So this is the same thing here. This is the same deer. Many times a day, the mother needs to feed the child, not only to feed him, but something else is happening other than food. And these are the things our parents, Juan, Amarilis, Desma, didn't know. They didn't know they were just doing what they knew they were supposed to do. You, you know, uh, you, you, you know when, um, one second, you know when, um, just remind us if we forget, it's not an insult. Um, people get insulted, we don't remember that they raise their hands. Um, okay, I'll keep raising my hands. Thank you. Um, you, know the, you know when you take, some of you have kids, they go to the park, they're playing with the kids, the kids go to the swing, the kids come back, the kids go come back, and the children, how many of you have done it? I've done it. Make up your mind, what you want to do. I mean, really? You know what the kid's doing, right? He's expanding his trust. He's expanding his borders. He, he, he knows he can go out there and come back to safety. But we tell them, don't come back to safety. It's disturbing. I mean, all these things that you learn as you go along, don't they make sense to you why we're so neurotic? We are neurotic, not our children. So in other words, have you seen kids in the park constantly go back to their moms? Yeah. They come. So what is so what's supposed to the mom do instead of come on play? You know, we have you have two more minutes. Take advantage of the time because we're gonna leave. <laughs> Or this is what the mom is supposed to be like, I'm here, touch him, synchronize. Come on, go play, go play. We're good. So then he goes and he explores or she explores a little more. Then they come back to mom, you know, like, I'm here. That's how it is, Amarilis. Yeah, um, and that, I, when you were talking about the whole thing about um, touch, I feel like in my instance, like my mom gave me touch, but it was like distracted. 
like she would be holding me and she'd be rocking me but she's she's like everywhere we get like she wasn't she with wasn't me present, really? yeah like i she just didn't, she just didn't have the capability of doing it so she i felt like i got a lot of hugs and stuff like that but it was like constantly wondering like where are you you see you got hugs but you didn't get synchronization yeah like you understand? that was just like not there touching you and not talking to you at all exactly I, I can't. so and the other the last thing that i wanted to ask is how does because i feel like for me i i struggle a lot with separation anxiety so how does that also play a role in all of this because i feel like it's not just something that like happened i i'm assuming that it's something that starts in infancy like having that like anxiety of like, where are you? Okay, yes, absolutely. I mean, biggest separation anxiety, I'm a master. And you know, I have double PhDs on separation anxiety. <laughs> I mean, it's like, Amarilis, as you begin to heal, you allowed, you know, like last two weeks ago, I, I did the rice thing, yeah? Do you remember? Like the holes go, as all those holes begin and you can contain, his love can contain yourself, can contain your truth, and it's not leaking everywhere. You begin to get solid, solidified inside of you, and all of a sudden it's like you wake up and all of a sudden you begin to realize, wow, I'm not as anxious anymore. Wow, I'm not suffering from this anymore. It just happens. It happens. As you go through your healing, allow it to happen, but don't get stuck in wanting or get fixated that it's going to come a certain way or it's going to happen a certain way. And then we miss it while it's happening over here because we think it's going to have to happen this way. Allow it to come. This is where the combination with God and the Holy Spirit. Show me, show me, show me. Where is it going to come? Maybe I thought, we were gonna come, my mom and dad, but all of a sudden, maybe Anna here begins to do something. Maybe Ashley sitting next, next to you begins to do something. And wow, then all of a sudden you are more confident. All of a sudden you're more secure, you know? The, the thing and, is that we're always waiting for an audible voice. <clears throat> can, can we just, uh, I have, I wanna finish oh, this okay. part and okay. then just, okay. because it's important so we can be more in time. Yeah. So um, for most of human history, how a baby thrived depended on mother's success in synchronizing with her baby's needs, perhaps still does. I mean, listen to this. And mother, don't get stuck with the word mother. It could have been a grandmother, whoever was that person raising you, you know? Um, thriving flows from keeping the basic rhythms of life. Back to that word again, rhythms. Unsynchronized life, it's painful. People in pain will use all of the energy trying to avoid more pain or making the pain stop. Rarely do we recognize that the way out of pain is through restoring our rhythms. So you see, like, we don't want pain. So what do we do? Then our mission in life as little kids, when we've had an unsynchronized life is what? How am I going to avoid this pain? So we begin to take Tylenol. Think, put a name to your Tylenol to avoid that pain where we should be thriving, where should, we should be emotionally developing in a healthy way, where we should be growing and, and, and living life. Our mission in life is what am I going to find unconsciously that's going to soothe this pain? Is it in success? Is it in being the best at everything I do? Is it being in school and getting all the cheers from the people? I mean, you name it. What is? What was it for you? What is it for you? And then it begins to make sense. So what are these rhythms? Some of this rhythm is belonging. Belonging. Thriving means synchronizing with the right people in our lives so that our personal reality is meaningful rather than painful. You know, I've seen my daughter, you know, she's been playing the drum since this age, since she's eight years old. And she's good at it. The drum teacher will tell me she's good. Very good. 
She goes into a magnet school for music. She's in band, she's in percussion. She plays percussion. But it's, you have nine boys and maybe two girls in percussion. And I saw how she began to decline. Mom, I'm not as good. Because all of a sudden, the teacher right now in her school, in her magnet, he's a percussionist that sees her two hours a day, has not been able to synchronize with her and see her. It's like, Mom, he doesn't see me. He gives all these better parts. And I played it much better than this kid, but he gave it to so-and-so. But no, this part, he gave it to so-and-so. So here I am playing a bell. Bing. Or the cow's thing. Cling. His mom, I knew that part better. You know, I've said to her, go tell him, I can do this. But I've seen her decline. I've seen it. And I said, Abby, will talk to him. Finally, now they put her into the very high band. And she's like, Mom, I, I, I am behind. And then the other day, she played a part, but she didn't play it as good. And but finally, she was able to say, but you know, Mr. So-and-so, you always see the other kids, but you never, never push me. You have never seen me. I said to her, good for you. Good for you. But you see, but I'm here saying, Abigail, you can do it. Talk. But you see, I cannot go to school and talk for her. I wanted to talk to the guy and say, hey, you know, like, you should be happy. I, I wanted have to do eight something to the guy, guys, too, not talk. And you have a girl. I mean, <laughs> I'm going with you, like. Huh? Yeah, but, and I'm learning, teaching her that you're better. You can do this. So now she came home and she said to me, Mom, can I get some private classes so I can catch up? Because I want to prove to him that I can do it. Right. I'm like, you will. You see? <clears throat> yeah. I, I, she, this is her battle, and she's old enough, you see? She's how old now? 15. 15. Yeah, so oh, yeah. 15 she and a half. For her, she well, so when we, when we get to the child stage, in the early adult stage, you'll see why it doesn't mm -hmm. So on. thriving means synchronizing with the right people in our lives so that our personal reality is meaningful rather than painful. Recovery. Thriving means recovering quickly when we fall into distress state. So what could be a distress state? Recovery. Thriving means recovering quickly when we fall into a distress state. Okay, what could that what could that be? Tell me. You got yelled at. Huh? You got yelled at as a kid. You got yelled at as a kid, or, or even as an time. adult, yeah. or someone shamed you. Yeah, like I have a story. A teacher came yeah. and made me clean a booger from somebody's yeah. uniform, yeah. and she blamed it on me, and that booger desiccated. It was uh, a dinosaur. <laughs> you know, it was not me. <laughs> but I remember feeling the whole thing, the shame and all that. You know. Humiliation was. You know, humiliation. Getting you bullied. Yeah. Rejection. Getting corrected harshly. Making harsh. Yeah. Getting correctly harshly. The silent so, treatment. The silent treatment. Look at all this. So when we fall into distress state, and, and that, you see, we hear all these words. We got to put it into what was it for me? When I hear that, I, I, I know. I know when I'm like, oh, my God, I can feel it. You know, now I feel it coming. Before I had no clue, I feel it coming. And now I can recognize it so well, you know? From every desynchronized distress state, we return rapidly to joy and from joy to peace. Mm -hmm. You see that we come home, something that was not supposed to happen, it's happening. You know, like, oh my God, you did this. And then you get off it, you know, you get, but you can immediately come back. You don't stay there. That's so important, and that happens with a well-synchronized life. I'm synchronizing with my daughter all, I mean, it drains me a lot, because it's not easy. And I know this thing, I know this. But I'm constantly, I mean, I mean it, it, 
she still does that part thing. You know, sometimes she's there doing something and then all of a sudden, and she's intense, you say something to her, she goes, don't talk to me. Two seconds later, she gets up and she's like, woo, mom, ah, <laughs> 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 I just felt like, I just feel like I'm like, uh, like two minutes ago, two minutes ago, you didn't even wanna talk to me. I can be there like saying, what's wrong with you? Like, like now you, now you wanna talk when I'm peeling the chicken and I have chicken all over my hands, like, no, you know what? I'm like, chicken hand, okay. Hi. Just, 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 just so you know, Giovanna and me get challenged in this all day, every day. Abigail challenges us, I challenge her. This is normal living. It is. So what do you want? You want it to disappear? It won't. Get over yourself. It won't. What are you going to do about it? How are you going to live? You know, he read that thing from Jack. I mean, the beast. Y'all should watch the father's embrace. Nine hours for one year. They all get healed. Okay. So we have belonging. In the resources page, it says Jack Frost is a link to all the videos. Oh, Thank really? you, Gigi. Oh. Belonging. We're very fancy. Thanks no, to no, no, no. But what I encourage you all, every ministry needs money. Because people call me up for freebies all the time. And I'm like, what's wrong with you? They're a ministry. Go buy it. Oh, what a revolutionary idea. They need the money. Why do we, we all, yeah, we too, but that's all yeah. another conversation. Why, why do you, what is it with us? I mean, there's a, uh, we have, what is it with us? We want everything for free from everybody, but we don't want to give nothing for free to nobody. I'm telling, people call me, I say, can you send me Jack stuff? And I'm like, no, go buy it. Can you buy it for me? No. Yeah, no, these are real conversations. So we have belonging. Recovery, maturity. Thriving means the demands placed on us are synchronized to our development, so we remain hopeful. Listen to this. I mean, read this, people. Please read it. Thriving means the demands placed on us are synchronized to our development, so we remain hopeful, intentional, and in control as we learn new abilities. When you give a little boy the, the man, that he's the man of the house now, and that he has to take care of his mother, his sisters, his siblings, he can't. Guess where does he go into hopelessness? Because it's a task that he knows he cannot even imagine that he can do. You, you just read that? When the demands placed on us are synchronized to our development, so we remain hopeful, that means that we get bites that we can bite, that we can chew and we can eat, and we can digest. Each appropriate as we go. So we develop properly. So then we can remain hopeful, intentional, and in control as we learn new abilities. Each stage of our development is undertaken in the right order. So the development of each new capacity is synchronized with the best age for that ability to grow instead of reacting to others or our circumstances, we creatively act like ourselves. Our control centers are well trained. What were our control centers, our sexual life, our eating life, our trust, our ability to rest, our ability to bond with other people so they can work properly. When a baby starts to cry, we need to synchronize with them so the baby can feel love, care, understood, secure, and accepted in the middle of his discomfort. Mom and dad come, 
they love him and they accompany the baby and together they come out of that. So when, in a, when we've had that process in a healthy way, we, we know how to come out properly out of places. Look, look how beautiful. This is then when we first experience someone coming into our pain, into our discomfort and helping us come out. And we have um, a, picture. a picture, Giorgio, of the... So this is when we first learn to be regulated. With someone, when you're there, gives you a hand and he says, come on. And that's exactly what we're doing here. See, many of us skip the first grade. We barely learned the second grade. Now we're doing life. And then we need one another to say, hey, we need one another to remind each other. We need one another to synchronize. Someone to come and synchronize says, Carlos, that's not who you are. You know, Carlos came here all broken. Didn't even know right from left. We began to look at Carlos and say, Carlos, that's not you, right? That's right. Carlos, you're better than this. Carlos, and I and look where he's at in a much better place. He said today, this morning, my dad not so doing so well. There's some family issues, but I said, how's your home? Home. No, my home home is cool. But he's been putting on the work. And so, guess who we asked? His wife. His wife. <laughs> I think so. I didn't ask this morning. So, um, I don't think I felt, you know, I just realized something as I'm saying this. I didn't feel very protected when I was a child. That's in my next stage from 5 to 12. So, Joey, he's helping me feel protected. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Joey. <laughs> Yes, he does. As long as I give him food, right? <laughs> go, go with, go with Giorgio. Yeah. So I just want to remind everybody about our support groups. Um, Thursdays, seven to nine thirty p.m. Can you hear me? So, do you guys are picking up the importance of synchronization, the importance of bond, the importance of att healthy attachments? You know. So. Um, before we left them the break, he says, um, in all this was the beginning when we learned to be regulated. You know, it's so important to learn to be regulated. So we're going to watch um, this little video, and you're going to see why it's so important, and, and that we know and we recognize it. Georgia. Yo, comedian Michael Jr. here. As you know, I just flat out enjoy doing comedy. But one of the things I love way more than that is being a dad. Not too long ago, I'm going through some video footage and I run into this video of my youngest daughter being born. Now, of course, I was there. I actually took the video, but I had never really experienced it from this perspective before. Now, look, we're in the hospital room. She's uh, sticky and she's baby and all that stuff. And she's in the middle of crying. And then I speak up. I start talking to her. How she responds when she hears my voice. It's okay, Portland, look, I'm right here. It's okay, it's okay. I'm right here, I'm right here. We're doing just fine. It's okay. It's okay. I'm right here. Right here. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay, baby. It's okay. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> so check it. A few minutes later, uh, the nurse starts working on her, puts her pamper on her, and uh, I'm not saying anything, and she actually starts to cry again. Then I speak up. She hears my voice and stops crying like again but i want you to notice what else happens after i tell her that i love her portland it's okay it's okay it's good it's good it's good i'm right here i'm right here i am right here 
I love you. I love you. I love you. Yeah, I'm right here. I'm right here. It's okay. It's okay. That's just phenomenal. I'm <laughs> like, whoa. Here's the thing. We'll always have times where we're not as comfortable, probably even to the point of tears, where life is just heavy. The key thing to do in those moments is to be still and listen for the Father's voice because he is trying to talk to you. And I can tell you what he wants you to know is that he loves you. What you gotta do is open your eyes. Wasn't that amazing? <clears throat> that, that's the power of synchronization, you know? And we think, we think they're not feeling. So we have another video that we're gonna play and that that continues to drive the point of the touch and everything. So here we go. This is going to touch? Yeah. Mother's Day is great. Mother's Day is when they, you know, burn my toast and jump on me in bed. And I love it. It makes my heart melt. After three years of trying for a baby, we discovered that we were going to have twins. And we were super excited. We were going to have two babies. At 26 weeks, we were told I was going into labour early. It was the most frightening thing I've ever been told. When they were born, we were eager to find out. There was a bit of confusion over what sex they were, because when they're premature, everything is a little bit different. First they called out it was two boys, then they called out it was a boy and a girl. And then we noticed the dynamic in the room was quite strained. The doctor turned and said, have you chosen a name for your son? And we said, yeah, his name's Jamie. And he just sat on the edge of the bed and said, Jamie didn't make it, we've lost him. David collapsed next to me. I just grabbed the baby from the doctor and unwrapped him and I ordered David to get his clothes off and get into bed with me because I wanted as much body heat around this baby as possible because he was cold and I wanted him to be warm and alive. We put his skin against my skin and then I just held him. Close to my heart, I moved his head so that his ear would be able to hear my heart beating and cried and cried. So we told him that he had a sister and that her name was Emily and that she was going to be okay and that he needed to look out for her. And that we had big plans for him, for his life. We made a lot of promises, which we're happy to keep. And we described all of his extended family to him. So we're bawling our eyes out and holding him. And then he started to move. And we thought, what? <laughs> What's happening? And so we rang for the midwives to come back. We said, look, he's moving. He's breathing. And they said, he's dying. You need to say goodbye. And we never let go of him. His skin was against mine for the entire time. And then he opened his eyes and he grabbed David's finger and his tiny fingers only just covered the tip of David's finger and he held on and he laid his head back down on my chest and stared at his dad. It was the most astounding and amazing thing that had ever happened. We realised it was because we had held him and because he had the body heat of his mother and father and that soft cocooning warmth, that's what had brought him back and had given him the time that he needed to live. We didn't stop touching them from the moment we got them home because we knew how valuable skin-on-skin -skin contact was. It's what had saved his life. Sometimes when I hug them, I think I'm hugging them a bit too tight because I, I know how close I came to not having children. The twins at five in March. Our lucky little third baby, Charlie, will be four in April. The good stuff is when they repeat gestures back to you that you use with them. So sometimes 
they'll sit next to me and they'll just start patting my back or someone will stroke my hair. And I'm just thinking, this is bliss, I'm so lucky. So what, what can we see here? The importance, can you see? I mean, this is amazing. And when we don't have it, when that didn't happen for us, we grew up and as adult and we were trying for something else to fill all that need and, and the void. So um, we all have this paper that you guys had it from two weeks ago, right? <laughs> so. <laughs> This is this is this is Prem's favorite thing, but he's not on. Or maybe he is. I'm the modern baby. I have a rattle and I have a phone. This is, this is this is what an adult baby looks like. I mean, we're laughing, and it, it is funny. It is comical to see Lucky dressed like that. It is comical. She sees me like this all the time. That's a whole lot of stuff. And my children see me like this all the time too. Don't worry. It's adorable. And we laugh, but this is what we look like walking around as adults. When we're adult babies. This is, this is what happens, and as, so we're going to see. What's <laughs> up, <Talk>, baby? <laughs> so we're going to see the characteristics of an adult infant. But before we do that, Natalia, you had something to share, so can you can you just come and, and because, you know, when we're talking about this, this could be a woman too, yeah? Yeah. An adult baby woman, an adult baby man. When we talk about hormones, and this is what I was talking to Natalia over the break, when we talk about hormones, we usually think immediately what? When we think about hormones, where women. do our hair go? Women. Huh? Women. Women. Yeah. women is the ones that go through all their hormonal things, and guys doesn't. But when we talk about hormones, it's for men. And women. You know, so, men have hormones too, right? Yeah. That's science, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what I was telling Jovi is that studies show that um, okay. studies show that um, boys and teenage boys and young men need to spend time with older men because when they spend time with older men. Um, that time that they spend together regulates their testosterone levels. So if you have a boy or a young man, um, even in your 20s, your 30s, you know, you should be spending time with, with men who are older than you to be able to regulate those testosterone levels. If you have somebody that only spends time, like a boy, a young man, who only spends time with people, with boys or young men his age or younger, his testosterone levels will tend to be higher and deregulated. So that happens when the father is not around. Um, that happens when, when you know, we close ourselves off and we only spend time with people our age. Like, it's not just like emotional, but it also affects our bodies, our hormone levels for men as well. Isn't that amazing? Like, like it's the same thing. So that's the, you know, like that's the same experiment they did with the elephants. You know, when they. <clears throat> All this, there was a drought and all the elephants were dying and they, it was too expensive to travel all the younger, the oh, older oh. elephants to a new sanctuary. So they only began to move all the younger elephants because it was inexpensive, it was less <clears throat> money. And all of a sudden in the new place, all the younger elephants began to have all this crazy behavior. They were very abusive, very um, angry. angry. Um, um, rhin rhinoceros? 
Yeah, rhinos. Rhinos were dying, and they thought it was poachers that were killing them, and they couldn't understand. And it was all these teenage elephants. I mean, oh, yeah. this is Google this. This is there. I saw that. And then what happens is that when they it's, realize, it's and boy, they started boy, boys and girls, they started having sex when they were not supposed to be mating. Um, it, everything was deregulated. They were roaming around like little gangs. <laughs> yes. Oh, really? Yeah. No, it's true. So finally, um, they realized, the scientists realized this is this is not normal. This is not what's supposed to be happening. And they began to bring the older elephants into it. Once they brought in the older elephants into the whole thing, all this behavior settled down. So this is the same thing you're saying. So what does like we're talking about the infant stage, the infant adult infant, what he looks like. And adult infants who have not received these important areas as babies will always be needy as adults. So when everything that you have here was not met as you were growing up, as an adult you become an adult baby that's very needy. So you, you latch to people, yeah? They will not be able to take care of themselves emotionally, nor will they be able to appropriately receive important things from others. What's one of the things that they can receive from others? Love. Huh? Love. What else? Acceptance. Acceptance, affirmation. Validation. Validation. Instruction. 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 Right. Right. Advice, well, advice instruction. Yeah. Instruction. You know, nobody can tell you anything because you know everything. And if any and people are scared to tell you things because you know everything. If you don't talk to anybody and they already know it, we meet those people all the time. <laughs> so listen, you guys have to listen to this. You see again, we, we said it and you guys it took a while to be able to realize what is it that we are as adult babies. When we did not go through the process growing up properly through the stages, this is what we end up with. Adult infants will not ask for what they need because they believe if others really care for them, they would figure out what they need. Does anybody relate to any of this or is yes. it just me and Giovanni? No. Oh. Oh. Yes. no, I'm just being careful because it's like... I mean, I mean we, we meet so many of you privately and it's like this, like she should have known what I wanted or he should have known what I was thinking because nobody ever taught us how to express in a healthy way what our needs are. Adult infants cannot handle criticism even if it's valid and constructive because they see any negative feedback as a personal attack. <laughs> Adult infants are often possessive of relationships, territory, power, and possessions. This is mine. You see? This is when you can have a, 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 in a marriage one of the spouses extremely jealous, you know? Extremely possessive, you know, extremely overpowering. Adult infants are often. Adult infants use fear bonding to ensure others will stay bonded to them. That's a big one. You know, when you hear someone tell you that the marriage is dysfunctional, the relate or the dating, you're dating a girl or a guy and it's dysfunctional, but they tell you, you know, nobody's going to love you the way I love you. You're never going to find someone like me. Or if you leave me, it's not going to go well with you. If you leave me, your life is going to crumble. You see, those it's it's through fear base. They're keeping people through fear. Oh, if you leave me, I'm not going to pay the, the, the kids school. I know so many people that stay together because they tell me my son goes to Belen or my son goes to Westminster or Gulliver and there's no way I can pay the tuition. So I'm just waiting for them to graduate. So when they graduate, at least they go to school and then I can leave. <laughs> because he's told me under no uncertain term that if I leave him, he's not gonna continue paying the tuition. You see? So this is fear-based, but it, why is that? 
I mean, he seems like a big bully, but why is he doing it? Because of his insecurities. He doesn't know how to love any other way. You see? Although high functioning adult infants can appear responsible in many areas, like handling personal finances and being punctual and reliable, emotionally they are Severe. crippled, making it difficult for them to have successful and enduring relationships. This is, this answers everything. Why so many marriages and relationships are not working today. But you see this baby could function in many areas. So this baby, this baby was able to make money. Big <laughs> Big this baby, big, this big baby was able to make money. <laughs> this baby <laughs> could drink well. Oh, no. very well. <laughs> and I made the bling 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 to pay for the drinking drink. drink, drink. <laughs> this baby could do other things very well. No, cigar. Yeah, don't don't think it's something no, it's else. Not, it's it's not. a cigar. A cigar. <laughs> don't go, please, please. <laughs> don't leave the room. <laughs> so can you see so he could be high functioning in some areas, make a lot of money, send his kids to Bollywood, have a house in Pancras, do all these things, but in other areas he's and then everyone sees that as Oh, wow, he's so successful. But his relationship with his children are dying. The relationship with the empo his employees, it's terrible. He's the boss that when people come in, and this could be a woman too. Don't, don't get lucky is the one that dressed up and in our home, in our relationship, in our marriage, he was like the bigger baby. I came with my things, but he was the bigger baby with bigger needs. So um, another basic need for an infant is silence and rest. According to Dr. Jean Wilder, simple quiet, quieting. In Hebrew, they say shalom, peace, yeah? Are both joyful and upsetting emotions is the strongest predictor of lifelong mental health. So to be able to have quiet time, to be able to have peaceful time, when you connect with life, you will have a much better mental health. So for many of us, it's so hard to stop. For many of us, it's so hard to, um, Dr. Wilder says, quieting ourselves after joyful moments as well as as upsetting moment is very important. Did you all hear that? Yeah. So is it not on the power? Quieting ourselves after joyful moments as well as oh, upsetting moments, it's very important. But sadly, we rush through life with noise, commotion, and more noise, okay. even white noise. We have another PowerPoint. After we have had days filled with joy, when we quiet ourselves and take it all in, it helps us bond and have secure attachment with those we have shared happy moments with. Listen to this. So we go through life. Why do we always remember the bad experiences more than the joyful experiences? A lot of us say, I don't remember my parents ever doing this with me. I don't remember, why do we remember all the bad stuff, but we don't remember the good stuff? Because we rush to the next one. So you rush through something. So when you have those wonder, have you ever had those days that you go to bed and you're like, wow, what a wonderful day. Yes. Or this day was good. Or this day was meaningful. And you go to bed and you're like, oh, this was good. I mean, any of you? 
Like I've had those moments when I'm surrounded by my, all my kids and I hear them laughing and I hear them saying silly stories and they're telling me, mom, do you remember when I told you I was going here? Well, now let me tell you where I was, you know, and they're laughing and they're now telling me, mom, do you remember that day that you walk out of the house and there was like the end of a little joint there and you stepped on it so my dad couldn't see it and you stood there and then when my dad walked away you were like what are you doing <laughs> and i said mom not me i don't even know how dad got there oh maybe my friend that came the other day you have dropped it but me <laughs> never mom please you know mom it was me Oh, thank you for telling me 15 years later. You know? <laughs> like, so, but now we laugh, we laugh. And when we're having those moments that they're able to be truth teller, that now they're able to tell the truth. It's wonderful. I go to bed, I savor it. I still have a, my 15 year old at home when she's with her friends and they're watching a movie and all of a sudden I hear the, hear them all making a TikTok and they're all laughing, they're all screaming, they're all just laughing. You know, I stand where they cannot see me and I just close my eyes and I allow their laughter to just pour inside of me because it's so amazing to be able to hear them laugh. That That's a joyful moment. Mm -hmm. So you see, so when I'm deregulated and something happens that maybe I'm like, is it worth it keeping this, keep fighting for this? Those happy moments are the ones that you can pull out and say, oh no, you know what? We can do this. You know what? This is worth doing it. So, um, how many? Sorry, yes. How many? Wait, another one. Okay. Fine. Can you, somebody left. Someone told me outside of Hope for Life a while ago that what they would do at the end of the day before going to sleep is write down what happened throughout the day, the good and the bad. And they would just take a time to meditate on that and just see the good. And a lot of the times you would say, the good always overcame the bad things that happened. But we get stuck in just feeding to the bad stuff that we don't see the good. So he, he told me this and I haven't tried it, but I think it's a good idea to start just writing down the things that happened throughout the day. Maybe you'll start seeing the good in your life. You know? And even just meditating on the good. Wow, this was good and, and savoring it, you know? Not, this was good. No, stop, savor good moments. You know, for all these single guys and girls here in the room, savor good moments with your friends. Savor the good moments when that person, like, that you like, that you never thought they would like you, and or respond to you that all of a sudden they do and and everything inside of you explodes you know like it, it, you know take all that in you know because that begins to balance and regulate those moments in our lives so and this could be this these moments could be with with our children with our spouses with our friends with our parents with family you know in the same way when we have upsetting emotions we can quiet ourselves and pull from the happy emotions to be able to go back to our joy center you see when we when we this is why we gave that joy class first and the importance of developing the joy center and awakening it because when we are not able to come out of these emotions easily. So we need to remember all the good moments and go back like we have in a bad day, but if I cannot pull out of, you know, but we've had good moments too. There's been moments that we've enjoyed each other. There's been moments that we laugh. And no, you know what? He's not the enemy. I don't even know why he's acting like that or what's happening, but it's not about me. And you see, and then you can pull back and and come back to it. Do you, can you see it? You know. So, um, so that's why it's very important. So synchronization. It's very important for the infant stage, and I think through life, through life, we all want to be seen. No, we all want to be recognized. You know, you're doing good at, jo at your job. You want to be recognized. 
you know, you're providing good for your family. You want your spouse to recognize it and say, honey, you know, I can see how hard you're working. We want to be seeing that synchronization, that saying, thank you, I appreciate it, you know? Um, so it's not only for the infant, but it, it's important when it begins to happen at this stage. This is why in the book of Hebrew 4.11, it says, God says, strive for rest. Strive for rest. We need to fight because by nature, we do not want to rest. We do not want to slow down. We don't want to take those moments to, to slow down, you know? Um, you know, when we rest and the enemy knows how, the enemy knows how all this works and this is why he makes us go, 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 go. You know, when we rest, we release serotonin on serotonin on an as needed basis to recharge our relational battery. You heard that? Can you read that line, Lucky? I don't know where it is. Right there. Go. Serotonin. Oh, right here. You want me to read that? Yeah, just read that. Okay, baby. No, because I'm trying not to say anything so we can finish. Because if we don't finish this, it's gonna have to wear the suit again next week, and I don't want to do that. I want it. Who said that? Oh, maybe you gotta wear it next time, next week. I'll wear it next week, Thursday. What are you doing with your hands? Oh, that's a whole other conversation. I was hoping somebody would ask me that question. But nobody did. You did, Brad. Thank you. I love participation. So re re releases. Uh, I don't know what is this. Releases serotonin on an as needed basis to recharge a relational battery. So when you rest, you're, you're, you're creating serotonin on as a needed basis so you can have relationship with people. So if you don't have relationship with people, here's part of the answer. There's no rest. I was going to ask a question, but I was trying not to interrupt, but I'm going to interrupt. <laughs> How many, honestly, anybody here in the room once a day sits quietly? No. Oh, okay, that's good. I mean, really quiet for five, no, no Bible, no worship. What's that? I have to. Huh? I have to. Yeah. You know, it's funny. You know, I, I woke up very early this morning. Because now I'm getting here earlier and earlier and earlier. You know, I love being in here when y'all are not here. <laughs> no, really. <laughs> and when somebody shows up, I'm like, why did they show up? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing here? Yeah, you what's, what's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> you know? No, because some people also show up at 7.05 and I'm like, what are you doing here? <laughs> you know? Last questions. And, it, and it's like... No, this is a real serious conversation. I think the thing is that we're talking about rest and quietness. And it's like, if you don't have, if you're having problems in a relation, you're not getting enough quietness and rest. That's what it says. So well, this, this is, you know, you come from work, you're having a super bad day or agitated day. This is why, it's, and your kids run to you and you're just not having it. What are you going to do to them? You're going to hurt them. Yeah. But you know what? If you say to them, Can, honey, like I see you, let, let me go have a quick shower. And guess what? Many of you say to me in the shower, that's when I yeah. hear God. You know, you go, you decompress, you have a good shower, you put on, you change clothes, you put your relaxed relax clothes. And then you, then guess what you're doing at that moment when you're resting versus trying to be the super mom or the super dad? Presenter. You're recentering, you're releasing Sorry. Sorry. serotonin, and all of a sudden you can come out and you just and connect. You see the difference? Then you can come out and connect and bond in a better way. Carmen. Okay. 
I live a very busy full schedule. So I want to say you have to be intentional and you have to be deliberate about making this rest a priority. I've learned through the years that if you don't, it doesn't happen. It, it won't happen. We'll, we'll, we'll numb our pain by just the busyness and continuing to do that and wear ourselves ragged and then be a disaster in our relationship. So force yourself to schedule that time and, and your words intentional. So yeah, but and then what happens when we don't we don't do that? We begin to hurt people around. This is why you to be able to love well, love you cannot do it in a rush. You cannot rush love. To love well people, you have to do it slowly. This is why when we're in a rush, where we have schedules, and sometimes it's demanding. I understand we have to work, we have I understand, but we need to have those moments. You know, I've shared this with some people and I want to share publicly now. Oh, does it involve me? No. Oh. <laughs> 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 But I tell people that, and my daughter knows this, that the forks, the knives, the cups, everything in my house talks to me. And when people say, like, the forks talk to you, I'm like, yeah, the forks talk to me. So you see, when I'm putting away the forks that got washed and I just put them on top and I'm rushing, I hear the forks on the bottom say, <laughs> Ooh. That's not fair. They get used all the time and we don't. Oh, do you just talk to me? <laughs> and guess what? I'm like, oh, I'm in a rush. I can't. I don't have time, but they keep talking to me. So I go back and I, I said, okay, okay, I hear you, I hear you. So I pick up the other ones. I put the ones that were used at the bottom and I so they can rotate. So everyone has a fair usage, yeah? Because that's what they were created for. And that might sound crazy, but guess what does to me? What does that do to me? It slows me down. It makes me be intentional. It makes me be mindful. It's not that I'm going crazy, but it's Instead of just throwing and rushing and throwing everything and then hurting, it makes me slow down and then it makes me it's laugh, compassionate like sports. compassionate, you know, it's like it just slows me down and I'm like, okay, I hear you, come on, don't worry, I'll put you, or sometimes I say, I come back and I say, you know what, I'm super late, but I promise you, after I wash you and put you back again, you're gonna, you know, they're gonna come, they're gonna change, and I go and I do my, this is all, but it, it slows me down and I connect with life at a completely different level. You see? So, huh? You saw A Beautiful Mind? Yes. Yeah. You read the story of the life of Mozart? You wrote the, you should. You read the story of the life of Einstein? You know, all creation spoke to them. And they have given us breakthroughs like no normal, not normal. We're all supposedly supposed to function like that, but then we take the Adderall or Xanax or cocaine or marijuana or porn or alcohol. What, who said Motrin? Motrin. Sugar. Sugar. You know, it's funny. <clears throat> she gets up at four on Saturdays. We prepare for this class all freaking week. Thank you. <laughs> So she wakes up at four. I try to get up as early as her, you know, and now I get up I, 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 and it's all here. You know, I, this morning I I woke up, I, 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 I went outside, I opened the door, I went outside, I just walked into the middle of the street and it was so quiet. And the quiet screaming, so loud. Can you all hear silence? She speaks to forks. Oh, it's funny. Coffee speaks to you. Did you know that? And cars speak to you. And we won't tell you what are your other secrets that speak to you. 
No, no, no. This is really serious work. This is not a joke. I'm making a joke out of it. It's true. But it's all real. Maybe chips speak to talk uh, about. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. No, one second. It stopped. I, I literally got out. I walked into the middle of the street. I looked up at the stars. I was like, what is this? The moon was setting. I could hear creation in the dead silence. Because it's not silent. Science says today black holes are not silent. They're brighter than the light. I mean, so something's going on that we're all just not in touch with. And we're all neurotic and sick. And we want to know why. Here's the answers. So. And my hands are still in the. I do, do. So, a, a, a class for that, right? yeah. so you see the importance of synchronization, pivotal. Um, not only synchronization, quiet, rest, slowing down. And this, we have to do it now. We have to do it today. We can do it today. And don't think it's like, wow, I didn't get this as a baby. But guess what? Now. You begin to catch up with all this. You begin to slow down your children, you know? Um, so look at some of the symptoms when a baby, adult baby, it's an adult baby. So everything is about him. An adult baby, This is, everything's about him or her, right? Remember, lucky is the one dressed up, but this could be a man or a woman. Don't get stuck, this is only men. We. I see a lot of you sometimes act like little babies. Really? Yes. <laughs> Everything revolves around this person. At the time he wants it, when he wants it, and how he wants it. At what time does a baby eat? You know, when they want. You know, um, it's on demand. At what time does a baby sleep? When they want, and if they don't sleep, my goodness, don't wanna have, you don't wanna have a baby that's don't cranky, you. right? You don't want a baby oh. that's cranky. You don't wanna, uh, one time I went with Lewis, uh, he was a little baby and I went into a ride in Disney and he was supposed to be fed and I thought I was gonna feed him in the ride. I had the bottle mm -hmm. and it was stayed in the stroller outside and this ride that lasted usually it goes so quick and you're like, it finished already? It was the longest thing. And it was one of those things that you go from one room to another room before you get to that other room, they're playing a movie. And this child was screaming. Like, I think it ruined everyone's experience. And there was no way to get out. It was really bad because he wanted it. But when an adult baby does that, it's impossible. I mean, we laugh and we make jokes, but living, being married with an adult baby, it's very, very, very painful. So what do babies want? Everything on? And what kind of a society are we producing right now? I want what I want when I want. On my phone. You can get everything on your bleeding phone. We've all become babies on steroids so if lucky didn't eat if lucky didn't sleep if lucky did not sleep at the right time if he did not eat he will get angry i mean and it didn't matter where we were i mean he will throw the biggest tantrum and you know what no matter what the whole day got ruined because he was hungry i mean that's okay for a baby I didn't come out of that right shaking the baby saying it's your fault. No, I, I'm so sorry. I forgot your bottle. That's with a baby. But when you have an adult baby demanding and wanting, I mean, how many homes do you, you grew up maybe in homes that dad ate first? Because if dad would not be fed first, it was going to be a problem. If when dad was sleeping, nobody could talk, nobody could laugh, nobody could walk because dad's sleeping. Once after dad woke up, anything could happen. It didn't matter if somebody else was sleeping, 
but that because, or mom in this case, in some cases, because it gets ruined because they're the ones and my time got interrupted and because I did not sleep well, now everyone pays the whole entire day. I mean, that's painful. Many of us grew up like that. So um, I couldn't recognize all these tantrums in Lucky. So he was hungry and we would rush to let's stop everything, let's feed him so we can carry on with our day. But I couldn't recognize that as dysfunctional. Hey, you're an adult. Go get a banana if you're hungry until we get to the restaurant. You know, there's the fridge, there's bread, there's ham, there's turkey. Make yourself a little snack. And you know, no, he would come and he would be like, I'm hungry. I've been saying it for the last two hours. Like, 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 Lucky, you know, I've been getting the kids ready. I've been getting this that ready. I've been feeding the animals. So, okay, everyone's ready. I'm like, <laughs> like, okay, let's go eat. Forget it. <laughs> like, but when I thought you were angry, it's, it's okay. And so, sometimes he was so upset, he would just go to his room and he would just go to the room and he will be just like. Who fell down? Someone was a the baby. Huh? <laughs> it's something. Don't worry. Something fell. Don't worry. Not someone. Something. So look at me here. We're about to finish. We're so, gonna finish. So what? What? You know, I was like, you would just be sulking, and I will come up and say, Lucky. I mean, if you're hungry, all the kids are hungry. We're all hungry. I mean, let's go eat. I mean, okay, we're going to go. If you don't want to come, it's okay. And that was later because at the beginning, nobody Thank even would go. Everyone would be punished. But then, God forbid it, then the tension that we will go to a place and then we will arrive and all of a sudden they will say, it's a half an hour wait. Because then that would be really, 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 really bad. You, you don't understand the tension, the anxiety, the, the we will get to places and then yes, there's a 20 minute wait. I mean, the look I will get, and then I will say, okay, we can go to, okay, look, there's over there, that place is empty. Do you want to go eat there? I mean, can you, this is why it's, it's, it's not supposed to happen. He's supposed to be able to go get something, grab something to eat while everyone's writing, seeing, oh, wow, my wife is running around like a chicken without a head, getting everyone ready. Honey, how can I help you instead of... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My stomach. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, how can I help you, Joey, so we can get out, leave the house faster? Uh, have something, don't worry, I had a little to eat, just, you know, and get to the place and have a good time. So it's all about them. That's another thing is they twist and distort things around. They cannot take responsibility, they blame. An adult baby blames. You start telling them, do you know, this is how I'm feeling. Um, when every time you do this, this is the way I feel. And what does the adult baby do? Okay. Well, that's what you do too. Have you seen what you do? Oh, and then oh, wow. immediately they turn it around and it becomes about who? You. They turn it to you. It's not against, and they begin to blame versus taking responsibility. It's called blame shifting. Y'all yes. know how to do that dance? Blame shifting dance. Okay. What's going on? No, something else. Okay. Oh, okay. So you know, another characteristic of an adult baby. I mean, this is so you guys can begin to recognize. When I began to hear all this, I was like, "You're kidding me! All these years of this behavior, this was not normal. I didn't know that this was not normal." When we first I started hearing all normal. these things, we we were like, "Really?" I thought all this was normal, because guess who did it to in my house? 
My dad. And where did I learn to behave like that from? Yeah. My dad. I act like my dad. So they grumble instead of asking. You know, one of the biggest things for when you have a baby is the minute they begin to express that something hurts and they can tell you where it hurts, right? It's such a relief. Now they can talk and, you know, they're not just crying and crying. Now they tell you that something's wrong. Adult babies do the same thing. They grumble and they cannot express lucky. And the, the sad part is that when they grumble, we all figure it out. You know, like the baby, you're all like trying to figure out what. <clears throat> oh, I know, I know. Wait, wait, I'm coming, coming. <clears throat> And we, we, we learn the language. We learn the language. Babies or adults? The, uh, the adult baby. Oh, oh, oh. You know? Instead of saying, no, what, what do you want? What do you need? How do you feel? Lucky, how do you feel? I don't know. And he will go into tantrums. The thing is that the tantrum of a baby, even though it's bad, have you seen a baby having a big tantrum? It's bad. But when an adult baby has a tantrum, it's not bad. It's really, really, really bad. When an adult cannot regulate themselves, when an adult cannot stop without hurting others, ruining somebody's day, um, recognizing what's going on around them, listening to the music or the rhythm of their children, the rhythm of their spouse, their, their own rhythm, it's painful. And this is what we do daily. So we got to grow up. We got to grow up. And it's not easy to grow up. It's painful. So I, I, I'm better than I've ever been because everything she's talking about I've done on steroids because I like that. I'm better, but there's still areas I struggle with. Not as bad as I've ever struggled with. I'm a lot better, I think, on a good day. But on a bad day, I'm still pretty bad. <clears throat> and I got to keep recentering myself. Well, she does it for me three times a day. <laughs> Sometimes she wants to talk. Ashley. <sighs> Um, I just want to say that it's so important to be present with yourself because mm. as I'm hearing this, I'm like picturing my dad because he's like the biggest baby I know. And then I'm thinking, my next thought was, but so are you, like me talking to me. Mm. But it's more subtle, you know? So I would say it's more subtle. <laughs> it's not as easy to recognize. And so that's why it's so important to, because I could stress and have turmoil all day about what a baby my dad is and it's not going to do anything for me. So it's so important to just in that moment, like I was reading it and I was like, yeah, my dad does that, my dad does that. And I was like, wait, 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 how do I do this? How do I do this? How do I do this? And it's hard if you're not in the moment because I feel so justified in my actions, you know, sometimes. Um, but yeah, presence is important because like, you know, the life shifting. Yeah. What a waste of time, you know, and I understand, but it's a waste of time. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to recognize in myself, what are the quiet ways that I operate like this too? Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's because then tomorrow you'll be a mom and you'll be doing the same or worse. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it doesn't matter which age we are. But to be able to begin to recognize where it's coming. So this is why it's important that the forks and the knives speak to you guys, because then it slows you down. Whatever that is, whatever those moments are, you know, for you, you figure it out what it's going to be for you, you know. <clears throat> so um, another characteristic is you have to read the mind, you know, the same thing is like, did you know, you were supposed to do this. No, we need to learn to express. We need to learn to say, that hurts me. We need to learn to say, I don't like that. We need to learn to say, stop that. We need to say, I like that. Oh, wow, it's so nice when you do that. Thank you for doing that. And begin to speak up and not pretend or expect that the other person will read your mind. 
Another big one is you cannot reason with the adult baby. You cannot reason with the adult baby. Once the adult baby is upset because he didn't eat, because he didn't poop when he wanted to poop and do the things that he needed to do at the time he wanted to do it in the way he wanted to do it, we will go to on vacation and Lucky needed to have the same routine in the vacation time as he had at home. So you have a 10 year old, nine year old, 11 year old ready because they're in Disney World and they're so excited to go where? The park. They can wait. You know, my goodness. But dad has to wake up, have tea, go eat. So he won't be hungry and upset. And then he has to come back, go to the bathroom. So he won't have to do it outside and hold it the whole entire day. Meanwhile, it's 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and the kids will be like... But you, want, you know what I wanted to know? What's wrong with my children? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's like, what's wrong with you guys? They need to go to Hope for Life. <laughs> Joey, remind me when we get back from this holiday, they need to go to counseling. They're like, these kids are out of control. They're it's acting like, like nine-year-olds. Why? They should act like teenagers or adults. You know? They're ungrateful. Ungrateful, though. Um, and, and they would be like, Dad. And they would, and Lucky would be taking, imagine inside of me, everything's also going, and I'm seeing him, but I cannot rush him, because then now the holiday will be but, ruined. But Abigail never had these problems. That's and very you, the boys will be here like, 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 mom. And I would be like, oh, I'm sorry. And then, like, and then when we leave the hotel room, he will stop and talk to the concierge to ask him where was the best Chinese restaurant in the area. And they're like, Mom, can we leave? You know what I mean? It's like, <clears throat> like, these were holidays, and it didn't matter. And it didn't matter if we were in the middle of something we planned. Have? Some, uh, what time would you get back from the party? Oh, as early as, early as, possible. as, early as possible. As early as possible. As early as possible. At least when then my What's kids... wrong with all these kids? They want to look at the fireworks. Watch TV, you know? You don't need to look at the fireworks at Disney World. So, you know, by the time we arrive there, it's already 1 o'clock. Guess what's happening at 1 o'clock? It's lunchtime. Lunchtime again. So, Lucky will be looking. Where is the place to eat? And my kids were having a heart attack. Literally but a I heart never attack. did all this to Abigail. No, I mean, no, this is prior. We're talking about <laughs> AD and BC. <laughs> Me too. And my kids, my the kids would be like, you got to mom. I mean, it's like we don't come here to eat. So then then of course I would say, guys, let, let him just eat. And then, you know, we'll carry on. And then they would think like they would be there until, you know, back in the days, they used to close at 12 o'clock, yeah, yeah. you know, like, yeah. like you yeah. could go, they, they would be thinking 12 o'clock, okay, 12 o'clock to 12 o'clock, okay, we can do that. And at seven o'clock, it's it dinner be time. like, it, it's dinner time. <laughs> We're not gonna, I, I don't wanna Come stay back. eating here junk. I don't wanna but eat here. Junk all day. Oh my goodness. So imagine that. That it's you cannot read. Now none, none of you act like this, of course. Only me, right? Yeah. It's only you, buddy. Yeah, totally. It's only you. No, no, you're all amazing. <laughs> I see all the fruits in all of your eyes in abundance. Lucky, ask my leg. Yeah, yeah. Don't get me started with you. Oh, the beach, the beach. You're in the mic, you're in the mic. No, no. No, no, no. The adult baby does not know how to take care of himself. The adult baby does not know how to take care of himself. You know, I couldn't leave my house because if I left my house, even for a few hours, I mean, I, I mean, I, I would, the tension of having to walk with the phone because if I missed a phone call from Lucky and then I would look at my phone and I would see 
10 missed calls from like oh. and i go like oh. oh my god like like the tension and then i would look at it when i would call him he would be like there's no milk <laughs> <laughs> What's your problem, man? <laughs> two cars. Two cars. No, if he gets home cars. and the there's no milk, the no bad milk. You know? <laughs> there's no milk. Where are my shoes? <laughs> like, like. And then I will say, like, okay, there's no milk. Okay, I'll bring milk when I come back. Forget it. Hang out the phone. Okay? Okay. Okay, that's it. Then I knew coming home. No, she's supposed to read my mind and she needs to check the refrigerator. That's not my job. I would my come job home to and then I would milk. come home and then guess what? I would come home and I knew not being have there being milk in the refrigerator would mean that he would not talk to me for a few days. Oh. <laughs> or he will call me 10 times again. Do you know where Lewis parked the car? <laughs> you should see where he parked the car. And I'm like, like, you know, like, Bro, and I would be huh? like, bro? okay. That's why I like you. And he would be like, you're familiar. Forget it. Boom. And I'm the phone. <laughs> And then here I am, panicking, calling my son Louis. Uh, the codependent mom, like Louis, where, where do you park? Mom, I park the car at the entrance. Why well, I always I, park in the middle of the road? I just right. park it. <laughs> Louis, because your dad just called me. He's super upset because you parked the car. I don't know where. You got to be freaking, freaking kidding me. Like I park my car like. And and then by this I'm I'm I, I have to go home because I mean the how I feel like the house literally falling apart. I mean I mean isn't this insane? I mean are we the only ones that have gone through all this? And if you haven't gone through this, please figure out your own story. I think that that lucky you're a comedian. <laughs> We all do it. <laughs> but I'm saying, Gio, this is, it's funny, we laugh, but it, this hurts. You know, the anxiety will create in me, then I will pass it on to the children. And like, Louis, I don't care where you park, just go move the car, please. So your dad will be, I mean, like, you will stop complaining. And then all of a sudden, I will get another phone call. I'm like, oh my God. Have you looked at his car inside? <laughs> it's like World War II. For how long hasn't he cleaned his car? And I'm like, Lucky, I'm just trying to have, I just went for lunch with my friend. I don't know. <laughs> I figure. Bang. <laughs> okay. So can you imagine? Did you do this? Oh my God. Oh, I you said? never did nothing. Oh, Laurita. <laughs> No, I just wanted to say that I, I, I realized that I have a lot of members in my family that they just act like that. I just want to know how, how to, you know, how can we help them? I mean, because, you know, I, I can see that so clear. It's because of what they didn't get. And, and, and I totally, you know, those were some of my characteristics. But it's so sad because it's really terrible to live like that. Yeah. And especially when they, when they say there is no milk in the refrigerator. And it's like, you know, so simple just to go and take What should we do about that? <laughs> because you see, they'd rather be right than to have relationship. Yeah. That's so, and then when we be, and so what, what do we do when we begin to realize, like, this is not, this is not normal. Why am I doing this? Why this behavior? I mean, Lucky has had to retrain all this. And yes, he's right. He used to do this. Now Lucky not only not only doesn't ask for milk, he goes and he does the whole supermarket. Like Joey, I didn't see there was and, no and, milk. And, Send me a list. What and, else and, do and we and need? And I was gonna say, but, but and I wanna say it, it, no no no. No no, Laura. It's very hard for me to go to the supermarket. I hate it. But I go do it. 
and I hate BJ. And I hate all the because it's re, it's really hard for me. You know, it's not like so. And today, if I'm hungry, I go and eat something. She complains. I go to McDonald's and buy French fries with no salt. But that's my solution to the problem. You know, it's like okay, I'm gonna go eat a salad, but I'm not gonna act like I used to act. So I'll go eat French fries with no salt or decaffeinated coffee from Dunkin' Donuts. I don't, you know. It's better. It's not perfect, but it's better. I mean, that's how you solve it. Again, we go back to what we do the hard work and nobody wants to do the hard work. Everybody wants a scripture verse. But you see, this is, this is, can you see the importance of yes. maturing? This is why marriage is for adult and an emotionally adult human beings for adults. Not for big babies. You know, it's funny when Natalia was telling the story about younger men needing older men. You know what the younger men do? They go and find older men who act like that. Right. No, adult, healthy adult men. And the women too. You all need, you know, it's funny. I say to some, some of the guys here, they go hug the young girl. I say, stop it. Go hug the, the mothers in the room. Go hug the girls. Oh, okay. I have mother issues. Oh, go hug the mothers. Don't go hug the girls. Because they go after the little girls and hug them. You know, again, nobody wants to do the hard work. Everyone just wants to moan, groan, complain. It's where's BB? It's God's fault. It's God's fault. And we do this all the time. It's lackey's that's a, that's the number one thing in here, you know. It's lackey's fault. Yeah. I do everything wrong. No, I'm not talking about you. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to know because I get the blame. No, you don't get the blame as much as me. Don't do yourself that favor. I get all of the blame in the room from the men and the women. And it's okay. But we do this. You see, we don't want to do the work. It's your fault. I don't like the way you behave. Oh, okay, and how about you, huh? Yeah, yeah, no, I know. I'm just saying, no, but nobody wants to do the work. That's the point. You do it so well. The work? So, what? Uh, Gina. Sorry, it was just to say, like, and then to really emphasize, like, obviously, emotional wellness, but even just physical wellness. Like, if you're constantly in this, like, state of stress and anxiety, it's like there are literal hormones in your body that are ruining your kidneys, that are ruining your blood vessels, that are ruining your cortisol. Heart, constantly just pushing out this state of stress to your body and now we wonder why we have arthritis why we have high blood pressure why we have diabetes why we have autoimmune disorders because it all starts with being able to regulate your stress because if you cannot physically you are deteriorating your body exactly no what we do inside of us thank you for bringing that up absolutely so isn't it worth it trying to grow up and realize no don't think about oh my spouse oh my ex oh this is oh like are you hearing no where do i do this where do i behave like this like ashley said i don't care how old right. are you where do i do this no and ashley did that very well and like when tuan said a little while ago after a while it gets really boring my father my mother after five years, it's still your father and your mother. Well, okay, we got it already. Can we move from there and go somewhere else? Yes. Because it's like we're always consistently looking to blame somebody else. And what you said about your dad was my fa I was, my father died. When did he die? Eighteen years. Eighteen ago. years. Ago. My mother died. It's eight. Eight years ago. I I'm really grateful for the father's embrace because. That's been the one that's free. I, my dad did what he did. My mom did what she did. You know what? And then my response to them was terrible. And Jack talks about that. Okay, your father, your mother, we get it. But a few years later, it's like, okay, you want real healing? How was your response to them? Now own that stuff. And then you really start getting well. So an adult baby to blame and okay. manipulate, you know? Okay. So Another. I, I think, I think, I mean, 
we we get it we see it and why does your dad act like that why did my dad act like that what because that's all they saw too this is this is what happens so are we willing to break this and say no more mm -hmm. we don't pass this on enough, that's good so no more enough, enough is, is enough, enough. I'm sick and tired. I used to use this line a lot. I haven't used it for a I'm yes. sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yep. So do something about it. Where's some lifting? So I, I will. To all, the, <laughs> to all the babies in this room, we can help each other grow up and catch up. It's worth it. It's worth it. I'm telling you, I, I do. I have the privilege. It's not this is not my kids left and that's it. I had the privilege to see the difference with the older kids and with Abigail. I mean it's night and day, it's worth it. And when you see people acting like that, that you see Laura, you know, we invite them. You know, you see someone acting like that and say, come on, let's let's go get milk. No, you know, you begin to invite them. When you know it versus if you're still stuck there, guess what you're going to do when you see your cousin or your friend doing that? I know the same thing happens in my house all the time and it drives me. And then, you know, <laughs> but when you know, when, when you can be and, you know, we're talking about the, the adults looking for that. It's not also only age. You can be in your 40s learning this in your mid thirties learning this and you have a 50 year old acting like that, you can step into now and say, you know, let me, let's do it better. You know, it can be done better. You know what I'm saying? So, um, the invitation here is, do you want to get well? Yes. Yes. I'm telling you, it, it pays off. It's good. And it's good to break it here for our generations. And you guys, we have the gift to be able to do it, you know? So with that said, Amarili, so we can close. Oh, yes. Yeah, I think one thing that I wanted to share is just even right now in my own experience, I think in my own healing, I've started to shift from mom and dad to what's coming out of my own cup. Because at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, that's okay, the wounding happened and stuff, but it's like, I, I can't do anything about that unless I'm looking at what's 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 pouring out of me when a situation happens and stuff, like the resentment, the anger, and the jealousy, whatever it is, like, where is that coming from and how can I heal that wound, which what I'm realizing now, it's like forgiveness, you know, and going back to it and it's like, I'm still in that process of like having started forgiving it, but I think it, now it's there's been a shift in the lens of like starting to take like get the focus off of the person, but see like what's coming out of me in response to whatever is happening in those moments. Yes, exactly. That's, that's very good. And that's what we're here for. So guys, do you want to get well? Yes. 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 So let's carry on. So God bless yeah. you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for being here. And we'll see you guys Thursday for support group and next Saturday for the class. Happy long weekend. Bye.